Okay, so we're going to be looking at uh, how we use the JBL settings and uh, why we do what we do as far as EQ. Um, first of all, you want to uh, have this uh, JBL Connect app. Uh, secondly, you want to make sure that you have paired properly. Use your manual to figure that out. System 1 and System 2 are my two subs. I have two subs instead of one. I have one for uh, one is always left, house left, two is always house right. And these two subs are uh, System 1 and System 2. So with that, um, then I can open up the JBL Connect. Uh, so I'm going to start from uh, scratch here. Um, this is uh, one of the things you first want to do before you do anything, before you run your subs, is please update your firmware. You're going to notice that uh, when you do the update uh, that there are instructions here. All you have to do is connect to the internet, which I am not, um, and then you run this firmware update. Before you do anything with your subs, make sure that you do that. Okay. Um, if you don't update your firmware, you're going to have that limiter issue. If you update the firmware, you won't have problems with that anymore. So um, there are a couple of uh, cool things about this EQ setting. Um, but before I get started on this, I want to suggest that you get something like this. Because when you're trying to navigate the settings on this uh, uh, Eon 718S, uh, you're going to find that when you use your finger, it's deeply frustrating. So uh, let's dive right in. So we have the two speakers. Uh, we would have to set the EQ separately for each. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I like to just go ahead and you have the low pass filter one, low pass filter two. You have these presets here. Um, I fully don't understand uh, really what they are, um, to be honest with you. I am not that uh, proficient in this kind of a thing. So I just go into uh, custom. Uh, oh, it's retained my settings in custom. So uh, let's go ahead and reset the custom EQ and then we'll be able to show you how to get there from scratch. So what you want to do before you set your speaker is kind of find out a little bit about your speaker. The 1718S has frequency response and uh, you can see this curve, but uh, that's what that curve looks like. But they also map out some of the numbers here that you'll be able to see uh, the frequency response. I generally run at negative three. So this is the number that really, um, uh, you know, at negative three dB. Uh, this is what I'm looking at, 40 hertz to 120 hertz. So what that means is any uh, signal that's coming into the 718S that you're expecting it to process um, that's outside of these two is actually encumbering the speaker to have to do things that it wasn't necessarily optimized to do. So what I want to do is I want to tell the speaker to ignore frequencies outside of this range. And that's what the EQ is designed for. Um, same thing, uh, my tops are the 725s, uh, it's these guys right here, so we see that the frequency range here, uh, around 100 hertz, it starts taking a dive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the tops uh, to be around 100 uh, hertz and above, and um, ignore the uh, frequencies progressively beyond 100 hertz. And with the 718S, what I'm going to do is have it focus on um, the frequency up to 120 hertz and above 120 hertz for it to ignore the frequencies above 120 hertz. Even though you really, really want to have that deep low, the more you uh, don't filter out the lows, you're forcing that speaker to process frequencies that it's not going to hit and it's going to sound not as good because uh, it's wasting its energy on frequencies that it wasn't really optimized for. So sure, you could set it around 31. Um, but let's have a look at the EQ real quick. So here's the EQ. Each speaker, even if you group them, you have to set the EQ separately. What I do is I come to number six and I will uh, take it at, uh, leave it at 300 hertz. And I'm going to take the dB. We're going to go ahead and set it down to a zero or, you know, negative nine, excuse me, down there, something like that. Negative nine. And I'm going to go ahead and make the Q a little bit more expanded. Uh, that looks a little alarming, but that's okay. We take uh, number five, and we're going to go ahead and bring this frequency down so that we can kind of maybe get uh, the real important thing to pay attention to is this white line. Uh, so we're at 152 hertz, and uh, you know we're we're kind of seeing where maybe we could have this, um, you know, come along here, 
let's put it at say 129 hertz um, maybe not quite that tight of a Q there we go and uh, and so we're just going to broaden out that Q so now you can see that the uh, the frequency that we're getting right now is starting to come into play we're at 128 Hertz remember we don't really want it to process a heck of a lot beyond that 128 so uh, yeah we're successfully turning it down quite well uh, so now we're going to focus on the low uh, so we don't know that uh, 30 Hertz is really going to do us any good. So I'm going to take it here. I'm going to take this and then I'm going to go ahead and bring this down to here. And then I'm going to go to 2. And uh, we're going to go ahead and bring it to a frequency like say around 32 Hertz. And we're just going to kind of bring it up. We're going to go ahead and make sure broaden the Q so it flattens that curve a little bit. And it's really about that simple. Um, so with that speaker you have a custom setting in this one so you have your two if you want to remember these numbers you can do that um, but basically what this will do is it's uh, setting that sub to have uh, an optimized response to where it's going to not be wasting its energy on frequencies that it wasn't really designed for so we come over to the other side and that's where we focus on this one we're going to do the same thing Okay, so uh, what we have here now, I've just copied the numbers over and you can see that the, um, the uh, settings for both of these are basically about the same. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to link these and uh, I'm going to go ahead and link these two subs because now I just want to, to go ahead and have a, a group and I called it subs baby you can name it whatever you wish by uh, going ahead and hitting this little pencil icon here and then it'll bring up your ability to name it and then I have them both set uh, here at negative 8 dB um, but basically what will happen is is when I start this up um, you know I mean it's at 8 dB uh, a lot of times what I will do is I will really honestly set this to negative 3 dB. That's where I will set it um, when I'm running. So what that'll do is that'll set negative 3 dB for both of the subs, as you can see that. Um, so the cool thing about that is it's going to go ahead and set the subs. Uh, you know, as you can see, they will change both at the same time. So if you have multiple subs, it's always a good a good idea to, to group them. Anyway... Um, so that's the the setting of uh, the crossover um, and the other uh, thing that I do um, is I go ahead and I flatten the uh, crossover for both of these um, because I don't use the onboard um, uh, EQ uh, rather I use uh, the um, drive rack DBX and uh, so this is where I would create my crossover and um, so what I would have here is I would have a situation uh, somewhat similar to where you see the highs would be my SRX 725s and uh, the lows would be my um, J uh, 718S. And so instead of messing with the EQ inside of the JBL subs, uh, when I have the drive rack uh, PA2 DBX, um, then this process is obviously a lot quicker, a lot simpler, um, and the reason the, the EQ is flat on both my SRX 725s and the Eon um, 718S is because those EQs are flat because I'm I'm doing all of that EQ processing right here inside of my drive rack. So that's another option. I prefer that because what I can do is I can come up here and I can audition each speaker. Uh, I'm not using the mids. Um, I can audition each speaker individually to find out how it's handling. So I prefer this type of a setup. But um, anyway, um, just a quick uh, snippet on how to, to run this. Be sure to uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, take care.